What's up guys and welcome back to another IndyCar diecast review and this is the first 2020 um, NTT IndyCar series diecast that we get and it's the first one with the arrow screen on it. So we're going to talk about the arrow screen. You know this is now first this car it was meant to come out last year in the standard you know IndyCar body. It did not because I guess Gambridge brought up, bought up all of the supply that was out there and they gave them to employees and stuff like that. So it, you're very hard pressed to find a Gambridge car from last year, but the, it is the first car released this year. So that's always good. Um, so we're not going to go over the sponsors on the car. You know, if you really want to look at the sponsors, you can look at it when I'm showing you the car. We're going to talk about this puppy right here though the arrow screen and the changes to the die cast now the first change to it is a minor one but it adds a whole new dimension well it, it adds back it's a feature that went away a long time ago and it's made its return for this year and that is firestone printing on the inside of the tires that is something we've not seen since 2008 or 2010 Actually, I think it went way after 2008 when Greenlight lost the IndyCar contract to Hot, or IndyCar license to Hot Wheels. So it is back for the first time in over a decade. It's really cool to see. It, I didn't I didn't even notice it honestly until I really got looking at the car. Um, but anyways, another change to it has been the shock cover. So beforehand, the shock cover was just kind of this bland piece. Now, this is actually the third iteration that we've gotten because the first had the wicker on it. And it kind of has more of a wicker than the um, secondary one. It's more raised than it was. But um, the second version had this kind of flat nose to it. I'll bring in my other Zach Beach car. It, it, I mean, you can tell where it was, but it's not really there. But the wicker is here more predominantly compared to what it was. Um, so the shock cover is all new. It does have the vents um, for the arrow screen here on it. It's completely new. Um, and it actually has this kind of... It. I'm trying to double check here to make sure I'm right. But the shock cover actually ends where the arrow screen connects. And you can see a line where it should end on the real car, I would think. Um, but you can see a joint line up inside the arrow screen there. But the shot cover is this piece right here. Um, you know, overall, though, the casting is relatively the same. Um, another big change is, uh, structurally speaking, this en the engine cover and the roll hoop were always one piece. Now you can incorporate the arrow screen into that. And the arrow screen halo piece, so where it connects from the uh, rollover hoop all the way down to um, the central bar, that's all metal, which I did not expect. I thought it would just be a plastic piece just kind of thrown on there. But no, this is actually into the casting, and it, it connects here. So this whole halo structure is one piece, and it is metal. The only plastic is the actual um, visor part of the screen. So as you would probably expect. Now the color match is not the greatest on it. Um, definitely this here is a little bit darker than the actual um, halo portion of it. But I think it looks good enough. Um, now the view that does this thing no justice at all is this front view. It does not look good from the front, especially if you're low. Um, now from the side and kind of from the top, yeah, it looks pretty good. It does. I'll give it credit. Um, what's killing it is when you look at it from the front, it's tall and it's narrow. And that's never really a good thing. But when you look at it, you know, from the side, it's long and it's short. And that's because of kind of the way it bows up to match with the bodywork. Now, this arrow screen piece here is just super glued on. And mine came with a little bit of super glue, super glue residue on it where it had been glued on. So, eh. Now, the NTT logo is here now instead of up here at the top. And the Honda logo is there. Um, 
and the 26 has been bumped up compared to where it would have been, which it would be down here. But obviously because of the arrow screen, it had to be moved up because of the attachment point. Now, Honda is no longer on the wicker here, or not the wicker, the uh, little fin back here. It is over here. It it's not just a Honda logo. It's just powered by Honda now. So, okay, cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, so really the entire center part of this car has been changed and rightfully so. So I'll give Greenlight props. They did a really good job on this car. Now, again, the Gambridge car, we didn't receive it last year, even though we were supposed to. Thanks, Gambridge. You really gained a lot of fans there. We want our merch, you assholes. Um, but anyways, overall, though, it's a really nice car. Um, so this is kind of the first taste of what we're going to get in 2020. Um, and, you know, when you look at it compared to what we had before with no aero screen on, I mean, you can definitely see the difference, especially in some of the casting. There's a lot more elegance to this one, I'd say, than the older one. But again, this is the third iteration of the IR-18 that we've seen because we had this one that was used in all 2018. Or, well, this is the fourth iteration. So we had the um, test car and the, or the autograph car, excuse me, and the 2018 uh, program car, which had the wicker. Then you had this version that had no wicker and on it. Then we had the AFP version, which was just literally just a little plastic part where this antenna was. Probably the size of the antenna as well. Um, just a little bit fatter. And that one only came for with three cars, I think. It was the Harvey... Or no, four cars. So it was the New Garden Champion, the Pagano 500 winner, the Harvey, and the Rosenquist. Those were the only cars that had it. And then now you have the standard for 2020 with the aero screen car. But anyways, so that's really it for this review, guys. That's kind of showing what what to expect with Greenlight's new car um, for this year. And, of course, the Gambridge car looks amazing nonetheless. But that's my review of the 2020 Greenlight IndyCar casting. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully... You guys get a lot of these things, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.